Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's look at Jupiter's position in the solar system relative to the rest of the planets. There are two big differences between the inner solar system and the outer solar system. So let's take a look. We have a small picture up here and here probably barely in view for the camera. You see the very small four terrestrial planets that are formed relatively close to the Sun and then you have the four large gas planets. Now Jupiter and Saturn are truly gas planets. Uranus and Neptune have a slightly different composition so we'll take a look at that later when we talk about those planets but we tend to call them the four large gas planets. Now you don't have a good appreciation on a picture like this as to the relative spacing and position because besides the huge difference in size and composition we have the rock and metal planets on the inner solar system that are relatively small and then we have the huge the huge gas planets that are primarily made out of hydrogen and helium especially when it comes to Jupiter and Saturn there's some other constituents or of the composition of Uranus and Neptune but another big difference is the huge spacing and size of the outer solar system compared to the inner solar system. Now I've tried to give you a scale uh, feel for it, but notice we have the Sun right here. Here we have 5 astronomical units, 10 astronomical units, 20 astronomical units, and 30 astronomical units. Remember an astronomical unit is the distance between the Earth and the Sun, about 150 million kilometers or about 93 million miles. And notice that the, the inner solar system is all bunched up within about 1.6 astronomical units from the Sun, very close together. Then we have the asteroid belt, and then at slightly over 5 astronomical units, 5.2 to be more precise, which is about 778 million kilometers, almost 500 million miles away from the Sun, we have the first of the big gas planets, Jupiter, the biggest of them all, again, much bigger than all the other planets combined. Then twice the distance almost, we have Saturn, four times the distance we have Uranus, and six times the distance compared to Jupiter we have Neptune. So notice these are large planets very, very far spaced apart from one another. All of them made out of gaseous materials, although the ones that are further out, because of the enormously cold conditions out there, they do have some different, um, different consistencies, and we'll talk about that. Notice that the eccentricity of the orbit is 0 0.048, which is about three times the eccentricity of the Earth. In other words, there's a little bit more variation between the closer and the farthest distance away from the Sun as it goes around the orbit, uh, the orbit around the Sun, at a speed of about 13.1 kilometers per hour, which is about 40% the speed of the Earth. The Earth is almost 30 kilometers per hour as it goes around the Sun. The orbital speed for Jupiter, about 13.1 kilometers per hour. So it takes almost 12 years for Jupiter to make one trip around the Sun, which means that the position of Jupiter in the sky doesn't change that much relative to the other stars behind it, and so we see Jupiter move across the sky, not that different from the, from the stars as we go from month to month to month, as the Earth speeds around the Sun much faster than Jupiter does. At this distance, a little over five astronomical units, Jupiter receives about 127th, which is slightly more than 4% of the sunlight that the Earth receives from the Sun. So, for every square meter of surface, Jupiter only receives about 50 watts, as compared to the Earth, which receives 1361 watts per square meter. So, it is frigidly cold out there. It does play a role because we do know there's a lot of motion in the atmosphere of Jupiter, there's storms in there, huge hurricane-like storms, and so yes, it does play a role. The heat that, the, that Jupiter receives from the Sun does have an impact, although it's a much smaller amount per square meter compared to the Earth. Of course, Jupiter is a much bigger planet, so it receives quite a bit of total energy from the Sun. What's also interesting is that Jupiter actually re-radiates more energy than it receives from the Sun, which means that there's some internal energy that seems to also escape the planet and radiate back into space. And because of that, the surface temperature is a little bit warmer than we would expect it to be from the internal heat, although we're still talking about some very frigid temperatures that would make the Antarctic on a winter day kind of a nice place to be. So we'll get into that uh, later as well. 
But again, notice there is this huge difference in structure between the inner and the outer solar system. The boundary is the asteroid belt, which is kind of interesting. And notice the far spacing of the large planets compared to the close spacing of the inner planets. And so that's where Jupiter is positioned in our solar system.